Um, he's having an episode. What kind of episode? Um, like, is he a bipolar schizo? Like, Two NYPD officers approached the home of Wynn Rosario on March 27th. Officials say the 19-year-old had called 911. That call, city officials say, was classified by a 911 call taker as a person on drugs, acting erratically. Rosario's younger brother described it like this on police body camera, later released by the attorney general's office. Basically, like, he was just going crazy. Like, he don't, he don't even know what he's going to be honest. The moment those officers enter the apartment, though, the incident escalates. Rosario grabbing a pair of scissors. Officers tase him. They scream at his mother to get away from her son. Rosario rushes toward the officers. A police officer shoots. A younger brother, just 17 years old, grabbing his mother off of his sibling. At no point do officers in the video appear to try to de-escalate the situation. Rosario grabs the scissors again and takes a step toward the officers. In total, the incident lasts slightly more than two and a half minutes, and Rosario is shot five times. He was pronounced dead at a local hospital. A devastated family, a mother and brother now witnesses. The police were so aggressive and reckless that they could have killed my mom and me too in our own house. The NYPD says it is cooperating with a state attorney general investigation into this incident. Wynn Rosario is one of at least 20 people who have had a fatal encounter with police since 2015 as they were experiencing some sort of emotional or a mental health crisis. Drop the knife. Drop the knife. A New York One investigation has found encounters with the police during calls with a person in crisis are some of the most dangerous. A review of data from the NYPD obtained through the Freedom of Information law has found the number of violent incidents with police that involve a person in crisis has risen 36 percent since 2017, even higher in 2019 before the pandemic. There were nearly 1,800 violent incidents last year. Those incidents included the use of a firearm five times. A taser was used 363 times, an increase of nearly 60 percent from 2017. Physical force, 1,196 times. New York City, 911 Daily Police Fire Medical. More violence in part because there are more calls. The number of 911 calls involving a person in crisis in the last decade has skyrocketed, increasing 37 percent. It all means one out of every hundred incidents the NYPD responds to with someone in an emotional or mental health crisis turns violent. And sometimes that one could be deadly. I hope you're having a blessed year already. Erd Pierre called 911 in December of 2021, describing to the call operator someone with a knife and a gun walking around his neighborhood in Brooklyn. It seems like he has a, a gun and a machine to be a, a, a pink knife in his hand. Pierre was describing himself. He did not have a gun, but he did have a small pink knife. Police responded to the scene on Eastern Parkway. You got an EDP up here with a knife. They tased him. They tried to talk him down. You okay, pal? You need help? We're here to help you, dude. We can talk, but drop the knife. A knife in hand, body camera footage from that night appears to show Pierre running in the direction of one of the officers. He was then shot six times. He said, Mommy, I'm going outside to get something to drink. It was 4 a.m. And uh, I said, Honey, there's plenty of stuff in the fridge. Why you have to go at the corner to buy something to drink? And he hugged me and said, Mommy, I love you. And he opened the door. For 10, 10 minutes, take 10 minutes for them to kill my son. His belongings are still in boxes in the family's apartment, 
which overlooks where he was shot on the street below. Pierre was diagnosed with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder in 2019. He had attempted suicide before. His family had turned to 911 before during another mental health episode. I got 911, but on the phone, and I said, I don't want police. I want the social work. Somebody gonna come here, somebody was trained so we can talk to him. <laughs> that time, he was taken to the hospital. The night he died in 2021, an investigation from the Attorney General's office found Pierre had left an extension cord tied as a makeshift noose in the bathroom and left a note apologizing to his family. It's very triggering and it's very frustrating that it's still happening. It has impacted families. We're not the first, but we really wanted it to be the last. People in crisis should not be killed. They should be met with compassion. The family is suing the city, claiming the officers did not have proper training to deal with a person in crisis, and the shooting was negligent. In this case, the attorney general's office determined last year no charges could be brought against the officers. Since 2021, when the attorney general got the power to investigate fatal police encounters, charges have been brought in just one mental health case. In 20 other cases investigated by the attorney general that have concluded statewide, the use of force was legal. State law allows for deadly force when an officer's life or another person's life is threatened. The shooting of Wynn Rosario is now under investigation by the Attorney General's office. Overwhelmingly, when we deal with people in crisis, people who have a mental health crisis, um, they're usually responsive to the NYPD. We talk to them, we try to provide services with them. NYPD Chief of Department Jeffrey Madry it's terrible when we do have those encounters where our officers are going there to help someone in crisis and it turns out that it's a, a, a fatal encounter. It's a very, um, it's a terrible thing and it's something that we don't want to happen. But unfortunately, sometimes it does happen and we just have to constantly train. We have to constantly make sure officers understand their role out there to get out there and to get the person help. In 2015, the NYPD started what's called crisis intervention training to try to prepare officers for encounters with people in crisis. The greater portion of this department has had the training already, but all of our new officers for the last three or four years, they get it in the academy. So all our officers, and this is a young department, most of our officers out there already received the training. But it's not 100%? I would say it's close to 100%, but I don't have the exact numbers in front of me right now. When we asked for hard numbers, according to the NYPD, just 45% of the department's uniform members have taken the in-person crisis intervention training. They say all officers receive crisis training online and touted other trainings to deal with people in crisis, including a tactical annual refresher course. The NYPD says the officers in the shooting death of Wynn Rosario, who are on modified duty, were trained in crisis intervention. I believe the officers were trained, but it was a few years ago that they were trained. Have you watched the body camera video of that incident? Uh, I watched the body camera. What is your impression of the body um, camera? I will not, I'm not going to speak about that right now. Like I said, I'm, it's still going through an investigation. Um, Did the officers act appropriately in that case? Um, like I said, I, it's in a, there's an investigation going on with the Force Investigations Division, our Detective Bureau, I'll let the, the investigation play out. I don't want to make a comment on that. As the investigation plays out, advocates, officials, and even those in the NYPD are questioning how mental health responses can go better in the future. I would love to have a full-time unit where in every borough, on every tour, I have officers who are working with the clinician, uh, someone who's uh, licensed to provide the service that's needed for people in crisis. That would be the ideal thing. But you don't have that. We don't have it. We do have a co-response unit. You know, we do use the Be Heard program. We do go out on some of our transit initiatives, but I don't think we have enough to handle the volume right now. I'm on one Dini police, fire, medical. Millions of calls every year come through this 911 call center. Okay, what's your location? Tens of thousands of them are for a mental health emergency. We get our tech bag. A tiny fraction of them 
reach him. Make sure we have our gauzes. Isha Middleton is on a Be Heard team, a group of social workers and EMTs who respond to nonviolent 911 mental health calls. A pilot program launched in 2021 aimed at reducing police responses to mental health emergencies. We had an opportunity to be, instead of hands-on, minds-on. There are more people who need help mentally than they need physically. They're a small team. Sometimes when you see a bunch of us in uniform with the radio and the ambulance, it scares people. And we tell them the whole purpose why we're there. We're like, we're here, we want to help you, you're not in trouble, and that helps a lot. After the shooting of Wynn Rosario in Queens, a 19-year-old shot and killed in March by police during an apparent mental health crisis, Officials and advocates are examining how the city responds to mental health emergencies. Every single time a Be Heard team responds to someone having a mental health crisis or a mental health emergency, we're sending a mental health professional to that person for the first time in our city's history. Almost three years into the pilot program, New York One has found Be Heard has not reached its original goals, and a planned expansion is on pause. The goal of 50 percent was a goal that was set during the prior administration. We will fundamentally change the approach to mental health emergencies in this city. When first announced, the goal was to cover half of the city's mental health calls in the pilot area. But the number of calls it responds to every quarter is still quite small. And according to the latest data from the program, which is from last summer, it only responded to 23 percent of calls in its coverage area. The goal was a bit premature and we just learned so much um, since operating the program. Is there a goal now? The goal is really to just reduce unnecessary police responses. It's to reduce unnecessary transports and to route as many calls as possible to the teams. At one point, city officials put more promise in the program. In early 2023, Mayor Adams said he'd bring it to every police precinct in the city. This means responding to mental health emergencies with mental health professionals and emergency medical technicians while decreasing unnecessary use of police services. But eight months later, the city paused the expansion. It's unclear when or if that will change. As of right now, we have paused expansion, um, partially due to budget cuts, but this has allowed us an opportunity to really figure out what citywide expansion might look like. It gives us an opportunity to really make improvements to the program. For now, Be Heard operates in just 31 of the 77 precincts, covering the Bronx and parts of Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens. It does not operate in the precinct where Rosario was killed. Officials said his call was not eligible for the program because the operator classified it as a drug call. Um, so it's been a, a tough journey. For years, families like Peggy Herrera's have called for an alternative response to mental health other than police. I need the ambulance to show up first, not the police. My son has issues, mental issues. She called 911 in 2019 for her son, who she said had mental health issues. He started to just like break stuff in his room. And so I just walked out quietly and called to call the ambulance. And calling the ambulance, I spent the night in jail. Justin, what's going on? When police came, they tried to coax her son, Justin Bayerga, out of the apartment. No, y'all can't break my door. Body camera footage shows Herrera would not let police break the door to get her son. A fight ensues. She was arrested. Let me go! Police bring her son to the ground. Uniforms only escalate someone in a crisis. Um, and they come with a stigma, you know? We need compassion. We don't need uniforms. It's my guy. He was my favorite guy. Bayerga died in 2022 in a shooting in Queens. Prior to that, he had been the lead plaintiff in a class action lawsuit to get police out of mental health calls. One of the lawyers leading the case. 
I want to make clear it's that the wrong people are being sent. So the city has to have a system in place whereby they send people who are appropriate responders to mental health crises. She says Be Heard is a start, but it's not nearly enough. Police are still responding to mental health emergencies. We go there and there's a patient that's calm and the patient that we can help, we can tell PD we're okay. Because a lot of people, they uncomfortable with the cops around and they're more open to us when it's just us and they don't feel like they're in trouble. So for now, this team will handle about three to five calls a day. The rest may be the NYPD. Courtney Gross, Spectrum News. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. For more stories in your communities, click the subscribe button right here. You can also download our app or watch us on TV for the latest news and weather updates every 10 minutes and more. We'll see you then.